Sony has Spider-Man, Fox has X-Men, and the Fantastic Four, but why is this? If Marvel created them, shouldn't the studio be allowed to use them? We hate to tell you, but the answer is no. And Collider Crash Course is here to tell you why. So why can't Marvel use, let's say, Wolverine or the Fantastic Four in their cinematic universe? First of all, because we live in a world where things like licensing rights exist. Second of all, and rather unfortunately, we live in a world where we need something called money. This need extends to large corporations who literally need it like humans need blood. There was also the 90s, and while it gave us incredible things like ecto coolers and Jenko jeans, it was really bad to the comic book industry. And not just because it gave us as bats in Feral Wolverine. Despite the fact the speculative market really took off, giving way to one of the highest grossing years in comic book history, 1993, the same year that gave us Jurassic Park, Got Milk, and Magic the Gathering, your welcome world, the mid to late 90s saw one of the sharpest decreases in comic book sales in history. The comic book industry as a whole reacted like any good business would. Sweet, sweet greed. They inflated the market with variant covers and so-called collectibles. The market reacted, sales plummeted, and the comic bubble burst like the dot-com boom did to Napster Sean Parker. Especially Marvel, who went into bankruptcy in 1996. And so, while middle schoolers were slamming their Simpsons pogs and worshipping at the altar of Lisa Frank, the executives at Marvel were just trying to keep their Zach Morris cell phones working. Their lack of money meant they had to do two things. Pass up on film rights that reverted back to them, such as what happened to both X-Men and Fantastic Four in 1999, and toss out the rights they did have. So they formed Marvel Entertainment, where they could develop and package the films before licensing the properties to studios that could actually produce and distribute them. This is how Wesley Snipes became Blade in 1998 for New Line Cinema. Coincidentally, this is also how Wesley Snipes almost became the Black Panther, except that no studio wanted that, proving that given a long enough period of time, Hollywood will eventually do the right thing. So at the end of the tumultuous 90s, how has everything shaked out? 20th Century Fox snatched up the X-Men film rights in 1993. They have all the X-Men, from Angel and Bishop to Wolfsbane and Warpath, and everyone in between. They also have the Phoenix Force, Weapon X, the New Mutants, as well as the word mutants, which is why we're now having to deal with Marvel and all this weird Inhumans mumbo jumbo, well, presumably. So what about Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver? They premiered in X-Men, but they've been Avengers just as much. So they're shared in some way. Our Lord and Savior Joss Whedon famously used them in Avengers, Age of Ultron, but had to change their origin because Fox owns the right to use Mutant. This explains why the former Mutants became a Hydra experiment that gave them superhuman abilities. Creatively, Fox still has to check in with Marvel on how they're used, but both studios own the rights to use them. This deal only applies to those two characters. Fox also has the rights to Fantastic Four, so sort of. As far as we can tell, Constantine Films still seems to maintain some of those film rights, though they're obviously shared with Fox. This is actually a bigger deal than the X-Men rights because Fantastic Four has so much connected to it, such as Galactus, Silver Surfer, Terrax, The Negative Zone, and Annihilus. It's likely they have Agatha Harkness and possible they have Uatu the Watcher. Thankfully, both the Kree and the Skrulls are shared by both Marvel and Fox, though Fox gets exclusivity on the Super Skrulls, lucky bastards. But wait, this one's weird. Fox has the rights to Kang the Conqueror, who has henched for both the Fantastic Four and the Avengers. We told you it was confusing. Now until recently, Fox also had the rights to Ego the Living Planet, but they made a deal with Marvel so they could change the power set for Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who they used in Deadpool. Sony bought the film rights to Spider-Man in 1999 after a decade of legal battles with a couple of studios and James Cameron, who incidentally wanted to use Arnold Schwarzenegger to play Dr. Octopus. We should sue James Cameron just for that. Get to the spider. With the Spider-Man license, Sony also maintains the rights to Venom, Green Goblin, J. Jonah Jameson, Black Cat, Mary Jane Watson, and the Daily Bugle. Coincidentally, this is why we don't see reporter Ben Urich working for the Bugle on Netflix's Daredevil. Speaking of Daredevil, Fox had the rights to that property and lost them to Marvel in August of 2012. You see, these rights all have ticking clocks, which means the studios have a fixed period of time to be in production on the next movie or they lose the rights. So if Fox couldn't get Daredevil into production in time, the rights would revert back to Marvel. Joe Carnahan, fresh off the success of The Grey, pitched a gritty 1970s set Daredevil movie that Fox loved, but time ran out before it could get into production. 
Hence the reason why Daredevil is on Netflix and crushing those one-take fight sequences. Also interesting is Marvel's very own angry green rage monster, the Hulk. Universal still technically has distribution rights, though they don't have full licensing rights, at least not as far as we can tell. Our guess is that putting Hulk in the title of the film immediately pulls Universal into the deal, which is why we're getting Planet Thor in Ragnarok and not Planet Hulk. As for Ghost Rider, who was at Dimension, Blade, who was at New Line, and Man-Thing, who was at Universal, don't worry, Marvel Studios got all of them back. That epic giant-sized Man-Thing movie you've been waiting for? Yeah, it's right around the corner. Marvel Studios didn't actually start making their own films until Iron Man in 2008. They got his film rights back from New Line in 2005. The studio now has him, Thor, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Black Widow, The Punisher, all of which were at one time with other studios. Just about the only property Marvel has always had is Captain America. And even that was made into a terrible movie in 1990 by Cadence Films. But now we have this. And they all lived happily ever after. Except for Terrence Howard. Go ahead. Trust me. Come on. Do it. Do it! Come on!